Part 2. Azure Moon. Lone Moon. The Rose-Colored River. The Kingdom Army meets with Rodrigue in Elel, the Valley of Torment. With the strength of House Fraldarius on their side, the time to invade the Empire is finally at hand. Even though it's in ruins, in some strange way, this monastery never truly changes, does it? I studied at the Officer's Academy when I was young. Those memories come rushing back whenever I return. What are you doing here at this hour anyway? <laughs> it's the same for me. Perhaps you'll allow me to join you. Much appreciated. <sighs> I keep recalling my eldest son. He was quite gifted. In fact, he was appointed a knight at the age of 15. I still vividly remember the day he was granted a sword from his majesty. Dead. He was killed nine years ago in Dusker. All that returned of him that day were his sword and his armor. No matter how much you grieve, the dead will never return. No magic in the world can bring them back. That's why their memory clings to the living like a curse. The more they were loved, the tighter their hold, and the more suffering they cause. I fear I am not a strong enough man to scold his highness for his foolishness. Right you are. As adults, it is our responsibility to scold him and help him find his way again. I come off as so self-important, but really, I'm just a failure of a man. <sighs> Professor, I entrust the young prince and the future of Fargus to you. <laughs> you are a brave one, aren't you? One worthy of leading the Church of Seros, I dare say. You should know that I have no intention of insisting that you take back Ferdiat. All I ask is that you continue to rein in Dimitri's manic desire for revenge. Now then, we have received House Regan's consent. All that's left is for us to depart. If we make it through Gloucester territory and across the Great Bridge of Murden, will be in Empire territory. You are not afraid, are you? Ha! <laughs> no need to worry. Don't you underestimate the power of my soldiers. I'm glad you were the one to lead the Blue Lion House, Professor. I mean that. I want to leave. Don't make me do this. May my song reach the goddess in the sky. I'm looking sharp, huh? Hey, friend. Thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but... You've earned something, for sure. I owe you. I would like. Open offer to share your desires. But if the price is too high... 
I reserve my right to refuse you. I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. Can't quite remember how old I was, but my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear, could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Long since passed on. Natural causes. I believe it happened shortly after he cured me. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. And there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful. And helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission. To help anyone he could as he grew up. However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease, or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure, if I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know? It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart, to help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Wouldn't you like to know? Despite all I've done, I have my own honor. I don't lie to someone if I owe them. I do what I have to. Whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the goddess gave me two gifts. My life and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. Of course. It wasn't always easy, but in the end, it's all the same little game. Once I used a clever name and my charms to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further to help those who need it most. As though I tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think, hmm? A new power. I won't squander it. A new power. 
I won't squander it. House Fraldarius is a military house. They swore fealty to the royal family at the kingdom's founding. The current family head, Lord Rodrig, was raised like a brother to the former king. He harbors a loyalty that goes beyond mere duty. Perhaps this is why he was willing to lend us his aid. I have a request. I have a request. After all these decades, the Academy hasn't changed a bit. I remember it well, even now. I used to sneak out of lectures with Lambert almost every day. I suppose this is not the time for an old man's nostalgia. We have received approval from House Regan. We should set out as soon as you're ready. Intuition's all I need. I've got a question. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. Hey, Ingrid. I can't. Are you? Yes. I understand.
There is still more to learn. Growth sustains. I'm starting to get it. Well worth the effort. I'm starting to get it. Professor. You have my gratitude. <laughs> yes. I'm really getting it. Uh -huh. This will come in handy. Growth sustains me. I see how this works. I'm starting to understand. <laughs> For the two of us, this will be no challenge at all. All right, this is gonna be fun. Pretty good job if I do say so myself. I still need to improve. There is always more. I'm a quick study. Our scout has returned. As expected, there are quite a few Imperial soldiers stationed there. I see. So the enemy has prepared for our arrival. It matters not. I will kill them all, whether they are one or one hundred. What would you do if you saw the people who stole everything from you? If you saw them right before your eyes, living carefree lives and feeling no guilt, would you feel nothing? Do nothing? Five years ago, did you not deem the woman who killed Geralt to be unforgivable? I am most certain that you did. You couldn't let her get away with her crime, so you took up your sword in pursuit. Precisely my point. We're the same, you and I. You're wasting your time. There's nothing to be gained from exchanging words with a boar that has lost its mind. Felix? This is war. Every last one of us has lost someone we care for. But we all choose to suppress our anger and grief and go right on living. Do you know why? Revenge can't bring the dead back to life. Unfortunately, such a thing is impossible. Hanging on to your anger like the boar here is futile. Tell me, Felix. If the dead are beyond reach, is it not also pointless to mourn or even bury those who are lost? <laughs> that mind of yours. I'm done here. Remember, Professor. It's not compassion for this fool that has brought our army so far. There are those of us who despise the Empire, and those who side with the Church. If we keep running down this path, it's only a matter of time before the ground beneath us collapses. 
That's enough, Felix. <laughs> You're a damned fool, old man. The soldiers are ready to march on your command. Then let's move out at once. Every moment counts. Understood. Let's show those Empire dastards the power of the Knights of Fargus.